Hi, I'm Jeff. In this video, I'm going to show you how to incorporate the FreeCAD spreadsheet workbench into the design of furniture. I'm going to do this today by showing you how to model a box side and a draw side in FreeCAD. Stick around. FreeCAD has a rudimentary spreadsheet workbench built into it that initially only supported having a spreadsheet within the model itself, but as of version 0.17 it also had the ability to import an Excel spreadsheet. Now the functionality of the spreadsheet is not anywhere close to that of Excel or LibreOffice, but it is suitable for the needs of a, the woodworker. So let me just open up a example model that I created earlier. In this model we're just going to model a box side, something relatively simple. So I click on the spreadsheet and what we can see here is I just have five dimensions that I'm going to use in the model. You can see I've got length, height, thickness, thickness of the bottom, and that's the bottom of the drawer, and the offset from the bottom to the bottom of the drawer itself. You can see on the side in column B that there are two yellow cells and three white ones. Well, basically what this means is that the two yellow ones are now a uh, available for use in the model when I can't get to that point. But before we get to that far, let's just quickly talk about what functionality is available in this spreadsheet. So the spreadsheet can do the normal mathematical functions, addition, subtraction, multiplication, division. It also has uh, mathematical functions such as trigonometry functions, absolute value, logs, modulus, power. It, it can also do uh, aggregate functions such as average, count, max and min, etc. But it doesn't have a lot of the features that Excel does, so you, know, you can't do really, really fancy things in this spreadsheet and then bring them into the model itself. Is that a limitation on the, the workbench? I don't think so at this point, at least not for a furniture maker because most of our requirements are pretty simple. So taking my basic spreadsheet here, I have done no calculations. I've just simply decided to hard code the numbers. And as I said, we've got them all defined here, ready for use. So what we're going to do now is we'll just go and start creating the box side through the part design workbench. So I'm going to create myself a body, sorry, a part, and then I'm going to create the body inside the part. And then finally, we're going to create the sketch representing the box side. And we're going to do it in the XZ plane. Now the box sides are generally square so we'll just go with that for the moment, for this example anyway. And I'm going to make the rectangle representing the box symmetrical about the origin of the sketch. Just using the symmetry constraint. The next thing that I'm going to do is start to set the length and the height of the box side. So using the horizontal distance constraint to set the length, I'm going to click on the equation icon on the right hand side and then I'm going to use the length that's defined in the spreadsheet. So I'll type in is spreadsheet which represent that's telling it where I'm getting the 
information from, and then elf length, and then we select length. So OK. And as you can see, it set the constraint. You'll also notice that the color of the constraint is orange-ish. This distinguishes it from manually set dimensions or constraints because they're shown in yellow. So we'll just remove this one that I've added and then we'll constrain the height from the spreadsheet as well. So we click the expression and then you go spreadsheet and H for height, select the height and now I have a fully constrained model based on my spreadsheet. Pretty simple so far. I'll put it in an axiometric view just so we can see the whole thing. What I'm going to do now is set the thickness of the side. So I use the pad tool. Again, I'm going to set an equation. Spreadsheet and thickness. And at this point, as you can see, nothing's come up because I actually haven't defined or named the cell so that it can be included in the spreadsheet. So we'll just jump back to the spreadsheet and we'll do that now. So what we do is we come across to the spreadsheet worksheet and we click on the set alias for selected cell icon. And then we can give the cell a name, whatever we want. I tend to keep it close to what it actually represents so that it makes it easier for me to remember. So we will set that to thickness. Save that and then we will jump back into the model. Go back to the part design workbench and we're going to repad that out to be the thickness. Thickness. And you can see it now is there available for use. Okay. So it's relatively easy so far. Box side have been driven by the spreadsheet. So if we want to change them, it's just a matter of coming back into the spreadsheet. And let's just say for sake of argument, I wanted to make the length three times the height. So what I can do is just in, like in Excel or LibreOffice, I can say three equals three times height. And that will change the dimension of the length. If we come back to the sign, it is length, longer. Now, you'll have to take my word for that one at the moment because I haven't got a plan showing that working. But I can illustrate that further in just a moment. So the next thing we're going to do is put the groove towards the bottom of the side of the, draw of the box. And at the moment, I haven't specified a name for them, so we'll do that before we go any further. So we'll call the first one bottom thickness. And the second one, bottom offset. And that refers to how far from the bottom of the box side is the bottom of the groove for the box bottom. There's too many bottoms in this, but hopefully you'll get what I mean in a minute. So come back into the um, model itself, switch back to part design, and we'll create a new sketch for modeling the bottom, the groove for the bottom. Right. So we'll just bring in two side parts representing the ends of the box side. Then we're just going to use a rectangle to represent the groove.
And now we'll just constrain it using the dimensions in the spreadsheet. So first things first, we'll set the bottom offset. And then we will set the thickness of the bottom. Okay. So we've sketched out the groove and just to show how easy it is to add things as we go along to the spreadsheet, we will add the the groove depth. We haven't got that yet. And we will set that to five millimeters. Give it a name. And jump back into part design workbench and we will create a pocket that depth. see we've now got that now now that we've got the grooves there it'll be easier to illustrate what I meant by changing the design through the spreadsheet so in this case what we'll do is we'll increase the thickness of the box bottom and move it higher up into the box side so we'll make the thickness, or let's make it six millimeters, and we'll make it 10 millimeters up from the bottom. And when we jump back into the model, you'll see that it has been moved up automatically. So this makes it really easy to adjust dimensions as you go. Now let's move on to a more complex example which I have created in an Excel spreadsheet. So what we'll do is I'll create a new model by opening the Excel spreadsheet. And come into each spreadsheet. Now what I've done in here is created a lot more items or cells, which represent the dimensions of my uh, draw side. And again, I haven't done anything fancy as far as you know using calculations within the spreadsheet. There are a few which just do some simple ratios, but that's it at this point, because for the most part, we don't, as I said, we don't need them as a woodworker. But one example that I'll be doing as a future video is um, using the spreadsheet for proportional design and that will require some simple equations to drive the model. So we'll quickly save that one. And so that I don't get confused, I am just going to close the box side. All right, so you can see we've got length and height, thickness, draw slip, height, and height of the side blank. Now, when I originally started putting this one together, I was thinking I would model the draw side and the draw slip in one and use the calculation to work out how much material I actually needed for that. But I've since changed my mind. What you can also see is that I've grouped them into logical areas just to make it easier for me to think about the design as I was doing it. So what we'll do is we'll start putting this design together. So again, we'll go back to the part design. We'll create a part and then a body 
and finally a sketch. Again, we'll just use the white, the XZ plane. And because draw sides are typically rectangular, we'll just use a rectangle that is constrained around the origin using the symmetry constraint. And now we'll start modeling the dovetails. No, we won't. The first thing I've got to do is actually make, is actually set the dimensions, which I forgot to do. Okay, so I'm going to set the length of the side using the horizontal distance constraint and pull it from the spreadsheet. In this case, what it's done is taken the name of the spreadsheet from Excel and used sheet one, which is the default for Excel. So pull in the side length. And then do the same thing for the height. Okay. So to fit and then switch back to part design and we will pad that out again using the spreadsheet okay so now what we're going to do is model the dovetails so we'll create a new sketch on the side and for this one we will bring in in this one we will bring in all four edges of the draw side so that we can link our sketch to it. So the left hand side of the draw is going to be the front of the draw and going to have half blind dovetails and the back is going to be at the right hand end and use full dovetails. So when it comes time to modeling the dovetails on the front edge of the draw side. We're going to do half blind dovetails, which are going to be longer than the full dovetails on the back of the draw. And these are all defined in the spreadsheet, so we don't have to do all the calculations in our heads now. And what we're going to do also is have two dovetails on the front side and one on the back with a half pin on either end and also at the back we're going to allow a gap for the draw slip. So let's start modeling that now. Firstly we'll put in the half pins, the half pin at the top Then we're going to do first pin, then we're going to do the second pin. I'm not paying too much attention to the dimensions at the moment because we'll fix that up shortly. And then finally the last half pin. Now I've got a couple of redundant constraints, so I'll just kill those and to make sure everything lines up properly when we get that point, I'm just going to draw some construction lines to help with setting distances and so on. Um, 
constraints panel. I'll make sure my constraints, at least the at least the vertical constraints are in place. These dovetail sides are all parallel, so we use parallel constraint to set those. Same with these. And the angle, zoom in to show you what I'm talking about. The angle between here and here is going to be 82 degrees. And really what that means is that we're going for a one in seven grade on our dovetails. And my spreadsheet has worked that out for me. So what we'll do is we will simply go in and set a constraint, an angle constraint from the spreadsheet to be 90 degrees minus the angle of the dovetail, which will come out to 82 degrees. And we'll do the same, the reverse on the other, so it'll be 98 degrees. These two pins here will be symmetrical around the center line. So let's do that now. And the length of the pins will be the same. So we'll set that. And also the length of the pin, the baseline of the pins is going to be my smallest chisel which I've also got defined in the spreadsheet as being the pin width. So you can see things are starting to come together. We've also got the to define the size of the half pin, which is also in the spreadsheet. So we do that. Half pin width. Right now, I've still got three degrees of freedom. Okay, forgot to make the two half pins the same length. I'll just check to see what else. Okay, so what we haven't done is we haven't specified the depth of the dovetails. And in the spreadsheet that is called the front dovetail length. Okay. And the last thing we have to do is set the length of these three tails to be the same. And now we have a fully constrained sketch at that end for the front and we can start modeling the back ones. So what we'll do is we'll just do a similar sort of thing, one dovetail at the back. So we'll just put in the pins first and foremost. And then we'll model a rough tail. And as with the other one, we will add in some construction lines to help us get the things all correct. I've got to be parallel. Set the angle to be, in this case, it will be 90 minus the dovetail angle. This one will be 
90 plus dovetail angle. We're going to set the middle pin to be symmetrical about the origin. And there's a couple of constraints, duplicate constraints I missed that I need to take off. Now we need to set the depth of the baseline. So just like with the other one, with the front dovetails that comes out of the spreadsheet again as the real rear dovetail length. We need to set the half pin length set the length of the pin, which again is going to be the size of my, my chisel. And we need to make sure that the two half pins are the same width. So we make those equal. And we want to set the top half pin to be 10 millimeters from the top, which I've defined as being the drawback offset. And what this is going to do is it's also going to allow for a small chamfer on the top of the drawer, which will allow us to put the drawer in easier or more easily. Okay, and it's this one here. All right, and what we need to do with the bottom one is we allow, need to allow room for the drawer slip. So we will constrain that to be the height of the drawer slip. Okay, so now we have a model that is fully constrained and we can start actually punching out the dovetails. So we will use the pad tool to punch out dovetails and we're just going to punch them the whole way through. So we're almost there. You can see we've now modeled those from the spreadsheet of the half blind dovetails and full dovetails at the back. Now all we need to do is put the small chamfer on here. So we'll create a new sketch and we'll, we will bring in the top and the back and then we'll just simply model that chamfer like so. set the length of it to be the length of the drawback. So we get that out of the sheet, the spreadsheet. And this is going to be the rear dovetail length. And then we set the chamfer depth here, which is just going to be half the offset from the top to the half pin here and that's that's the drawback offset divided by two which becomes two and a half mil and that 
can stay there. And then, just so we can see it a little bit easier, more easily, we will punch the pocket all the way through again. And so this is what we end up with. Now, as with the other demonstration, we change the spreadsheet parameters, then the model will change with it. So for instance, let's change the drawback offset to say 10 mil, which this will affect the depth of the chamfer and also move the top half pin down, as you can see. Similarly, if I was to change the pin width to be 12 mil, the sizes of the dovetails will get smaller and the pins will get. So you can see designing using the spreadsheet is actually a very powerful tool. Well, I hope you found that interesting. If you did, please give us a like below or, or a dislike if you didn't like it. If you have any comments or topic suggestions, please leave a comment below and please consider subscribing to our channel and clicking the notification bell. That way you'll stay up to date with our videos. Thank you for watching.